the space, something which the NI under the Congress government was for, uh, for chose not to take cognizance of in 2013. So let's look at this entire issue. That Ishraj Jahan had been part of the Headley revelations at that time, before he gave his testimony here, is well known. The NIA had a choice to have brought it to the notice. Way back in 2013, in, on 27th of September, Mr. Arun Jaitley, as the leader of opposition, not as a citizen, as the leader of opposition, wrote a letter to the Prime Minister of India, Dr. Manmohan Singh. Among other things, he clearly wrote on the Ishra Jaha case. And that letter puts the facts there unequivocally. There was silence from the government on that. What were the facts? That the IB was tracking Ishra Jahan, a state police was not. That this IB was the one giving information that this was a terror module, that they were out to perhaps look at assassinating important people, including the then Chief Minister, Mr. Narendra Modi and Mr. L.K. Advani. These facts were there. Their interrogation took place. That is also a fact which was well known. Thereafter, an encounter took place, which is a matter of investigation. Now, even if the encounter is a matter of a separate investigation, as the Congress party is pointing out, and I have no quarrel about that. Yes. The question is, everything under the sun was done indirectly, directly, to somehow portray Ishra Jaha as a victim. Okay. Despite the fact that the L.E.T. had acknowledged her as a martyr. So, therefore, the question is, and that's the relevant question, irrespective of our political uh, uh, opposition, our political differences, can national security be compromised with? Can someone who's a terrorist be painted in a sympathetic manner to score no. political points? And are those not questions that the Congress must answer clearly before trying to shoot the messenger no. and the message? Okay, Dr. Singh, you need to anymore. respond to that before I go on to my next question. Rahul, Rahul, Rahul uh, uh, it's very interesting. Let me first repeat everything which I have said earlier without repeating it. I stand by each word. Second, there are two big holes in this argument. One, it was the government of India, a UPA government, which gave intelligence information to the state government that this person may be part of the module uh, of, of a terrorist group. Mr. Chidambaram, the Home Minister, later in Parliament and in writing and on press channels later, has confirmed that they only, they did not call her a terrorist, they said you must investigate and find out because IB only passes on the in inputs to the state police. But neither Mr. Chidambaram nor the IB nor anyone else in this country told the Gujarat police under the leadership of the then leadership of Gujarat to go and assassinate in a fake encounter even a person suspected to be a terrorist. That's the fact. Now there I find no inconsistency between portraying a victim of a fake encounter, namely I kill you in a fake encounter, therefore you are a victim, versus the fact that you may be a terrorist. That's the proud rule of law in India. That's why we are not like several of our African, Indian, South Asian... No, I understand uh, what you're saying. Or, uh, I understand the distinction that India. you're... No, no, we one second, sir. I understand the distinction that you're thing, drawing. Rao, one half a second. No, no, we all we get are, the Rao, distinction. Rao, Rao, half a but let's begin half first with the presumption. When, no, no, when one we second. Convict, Rao, half a second. Rao, no, one second. second. I want to begin with when the presumption. We, when we find... When we convict a terrorist, it is the UPA which executes him after conviction of being Kassab. Uh, that's look one, we'll so come we back to that one second action, you see i want to today, draw attention today, to a basic fact right, AI, no there's an undeniable fact here the nia one second, no no second. on what Can basis uh, no dr singh we on what second, basis Rahul, did the second. nia Rahul, conclude here see if headley is found right headley will have to be found right no but where is the if headley is found right by the judge uh, Ishraq Jahan can be convicted posthumously, posthumously at least by a declaration. No, that one is second. wholly consistent with the fact that you cannot liquidate Ashraq Jahan in a fake encounter. What's the contradiction? So, we are now, Rahul, I, I, I get a response, sense please. that we are shifting the goalpost a little bit. Rahul. Post facto. Now I Rahul, just want to come back response, to the original, please. no, no, one second. I want to come back to the original point and that's my question. On what basis, sir, did the NIA conclude here, see, while deleting Paras 168, and 169 that mentioned Headley's deposition on Ishrat. Now we know, sir, that the agency did not investigate on this aspect and chose to forget about it. Uh, the IB officers found themselves in a very embarrassing position. Now many people are saying that the NIA was pushed to taking this position, sir. No, I think, I think. Dr. Singhvi. No, no, no. Uh, you have not, obviously the BJP has not read the contemporaneous statements of Mr. Chidambaram, 
and the further clarifications he gave in and out of parliament. He said three basic things. One, that the uh, uh, NIA and the central government, as is the usual norm, always passes on intelligence inputs. They are not the police. They don't investigate. The job of the IB or the RAW is to find information inputs, intelligence inputs, and pass them on to relevant modules. Number two, they passed on information they received for further verification and action to the Gujarat police, as they do to every police in every state. They don't take policing action themselves. Number three, after I pass on information to you, Rahul, you are expected to do a fair investigation and then convict a person, arrest a person, do what you like. You are not supposed to go and eliminate or assassinate that person in a fake encounter. That's the long and short of it. The, the responsibility lies with the police to whom the intelligence information is forwarded. The, the NIA is not supposed to go out and catch the person. This is a federal country where law and order remains the state subject. In fact, if the NIA went out to a state and started catching people, that state would be the, most, the first one to uh, react violently and object. That is all that happened. In this case, the real problem is that the BJP is deliberately trying to say, we told you so. We were right. No, why we were the not paragraphs right because deleted. you never told us that assassination in a fake encounter has anything to do with the I'd guilt like to of the person. I'd like to come in for a minute, Rahul, please. Okay. Well, Mr. Kohli Sorry. wants to respond to you there. No. No, no. The para was not there because it was found. Well, I think, you know, the it's para, fascinating. Para was not what there Dr. Singh was is doing is, Dr. Singh is the building the case and we very, very no carefully around a very narrow parameter because the rest of it is extremely embarrassing. Let's go one by one. What doctor, when Dr. Singhvi constantly refers to Mr. Chidambaram, he fails to bring to the notice of the nation that actually under Shivraj Patilji as the Home Minister, which Mr. JT has written in his letter, we, there was in the affidavit an acknowledgement of David Headley's or Daud Jilani as his original name is, his testimony to the US. He is not a man who is out there free. He is serving a 35 year prison in, uh, imprisonment, a sentence of that, in the United States for basically acts of terror. And that he was involved in 2611, that we wanted him to testify in 2611, that he had a role in 2611 was well known. That he was connected to the LET is also a factor on which he has been convicted in the United States. So that's the importance of Headley. That was part of the affidavit of the government of the union of, as part of the NI, which was deleted the minute there was a change of guard in this case when Mr. Chidamram came up. If Mr. Chidamram's contemporaneous statements are to be taken, then simultaneously we need to look at all the statements of Congress leaders on the Bartla House issue, whether it was Osama ji, whether it is uh, 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 Mr. Hafiz uh, 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 Saeb, things like that. Why is it the Congress party always found itself wanting to uh, portray a message that no, no, we don't want to take a stand on someone who's clearly a terrorist Lest we may perhaps ang anger a Muslim vote bank. Okay. Why would a Muslim or a Hindu, anyone, want to be associated with a terrorist? Okay. A terrorist is a terrorist. Rahul, and Rahul, that's the Rahul. larger question. Why are we constantly trying to give a defensive a thing, sentence. paint someone as a victim, a when sentence. everything points that the person is a criminal or a terrorist? Okay. Well, I think you've heard it, uh, Dr. Singhvi. You need to respond. A Why is everyone answer, putting... Rahul, no, no. Rahul, Rahul, a two everyone sentence putting, answer. Why Rahul, is everyone sentence putting answer. the encounter two. horse before the, uh, the encounter cart before the origins horse. That's the basic fundamental. You're, you're muddying water, says I, the BJP, deliberately. Oh, uh, two, two sentence, a two-sentence two sentence answer. The BJP has forgotten that this is a program about Ishra Chahan and neither about Daud Ibrahim, and neither about Daud Jilani, nor about Batla House, nor about anything else. Number two, and that's an important distinction to keep in mind, Number two, I still repeat a fundamental distinction with the BJP is omitting, <laughs> obliterating and deliberately forgetting. I find no contradiction, no contradiction in finding, in, in, in finding Ishra Jahan the victim of a fake assassination or encounter and equally finding Ishra Jahan guilty of being a terrorist or being a suspected terrorist. We must assume that is a totally different proceeding. You could have convicted her, arrested her, prosecuted her. You could not have gone and fake encountered her. That's all. It's such a simple elementary distinction. But if you have blinkers on, you will not see that distinction. What's the circumstances? Well, well, I just want to ask you. May I? Okay, a quick Rahul, response. May I? Quick response, Mr. Well, Rahul, Kuhl. just two quick counters. Very yeah. brief. Number one, no, very quick. Number one, 
is that we haven't forgotten it's a program on Ishra Jahan and all the things that I'm speaking about are intrinsically, directly or indirectly linked to the attitude that governed the Congress mindset towards Ishra Jahan. The second point, what Dr. Singh is saying, if there is such a strong viewpoint, as he's putting it there so elegantly about the Ishra Jaha case, then Dr. Singh would have no problem in taking a clear, unequivocal, unambiguous stand and say anyone and anyone within the Congress party associated directly or indirectly was found complicit in a, putting a message that Ishra Jahan was a martyr or a victim. I will see personally, as Dr. Singh would personally lead it to say we will apologize on their behalf. Dr. Singhvi, that's the point, isn't it? I don't see what this equation is. No. No, no, this equation is being drawn completely distorted me. No, I think it's the BJP... No, no, I no, no, I'll tell you what it is. Dr. Singhvi, if in, case, Jahan, in case you're not being able to get like it, I'll tell you what it no, is. No, 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 the, the, BJP, the BJP is using it as a stick. That a, that a atmosphere of sympathy was whipped up in favor of Ishrat Jahan to suit political ends that her links to a terror organization Absolutely. were deliberately suppressed and then a post-facto rationalization is being now made that we are not drawing a distinction between the two there is no contradiction between our stands we are only on the point of a fake encounter I think sir you are not being honest with the facts here if you suggest to me that no Congress leader that no Congress leader has okay. ever come out and suggested yeah, I that uh, Ishrat Jahan was a terrorist. Let's face it. No Congress leader, no Congress leader authorized in any manner to speak on the subject, not only spokesperson, has suggested what is being blatantly suggested in a distorted manner today. Let me explain to you very quickly and answer your question specifically. Ishrat Jahan's guilt or innocence as a terrorist was never established by any known process of law when she was alive. We, I am making it unreservedly clear before you that if she was even suspected remotely to be a terrorist, she should have been arrested, prosecuted, hanged, as we did for Afzal Guru and Kasab. We did, not they. Now, however, what happened at that time, it was a topic of discussion, was a killing already achieved. A killing achieved without trial, without anything. For that killing, what else will you call her except a victim? She is not a victim as far as her exoneration, guilt or innocence is okay, concerned. Okay, quick response. But certainly she is a victim in being assassinated in cold blood, quick even response. as a suspected terrorist. Quick now, response, that's very we simple. wrap it up. If you want to distort it, because you are the one who plays court bank politics, you are the one who always looks a suspicion at the community as a whole, okay, quick you are response. the one who wants to bring religion into everything, then I can't help it. Quick response, very quick, sir. Well, Dr. Singh, actually it's not complicated that with regards to the points that you are raising on Kasab or Afzal Guru and their hanging and due process, how can there be an argument? Our argument is about the thinking that drives someone to call Osama bin Laden Osama ji and at the same time paints Ishra Jahan as a victim or a martyr as if to say that no, 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 this person was eliminated for extra reasons and had nothing to do with terrorism. And everything, whether it was within the legal process and how it was manipulated, whether it was the government how it acted, okay. whether affidavits were changed, whether uh, institutions of the government and agencies of the government were put to war at, at each other, okay, well, whether officers were per persecuted, well, plea bargains viewers, were forced upon others, viewers all of it points that there was a tonight. thinking that was there, somehow okay, portrayed our, our viewers Ishra have heard both sides tonight. You've heard the weight of both arguments from exactly. individuals who are perfectly aware of the facts and know how to articulate them in a manner that serves their arguments best. We leave it at that. Lots more coming up in just a few moments. Stay with us. Don't go away.